Okay, good morning, welcome. Uh, What's the mic? What one? It's just water. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so uh, Peter Kivas will give us uh, the, the last lecture in the series of lectures, please. Okay, uh, so let's recall where we're, we're up to. So uh, we have this graph G, which is uh, high divisible and typical. Uh, so then we, we chose a template. T and uh, G star is the union of T. Um, and then we, uh, so this covered some constant proportion of, of the graph, um, which is a constant proportion of the edges, but I'm re representing it schematically like, like this. Um, then we had a, a nibble. M, so this is the, the union of M. Uh, and some small leaf. Uh, we covered the leaf. Uh, and uh, then we uh, designed the hole, which uh, this is this is the spill, and we designed the hole which uh, which fits the uh, spill. So we're we're in a situation where we've covered everything once, and the spill has been covered twice. We want to to make a hole, so, the, so we've got the. Uh, Uh, so, uh, so we're in a situation where, um, so if if we had the outer decomposition contained in the, temp in the template, we would be done. Uh, because we would take we take the nibble, we'd take the cover, we'd take the inner decomposition, and then we'd take the part of the template which didn't contain this outer decomposition. Uh, but I didn't guarantee that yet. All I, all I these uh, the, these uh, triangles M zero and M I are just contained in the underlying graph of the template. There, uh, they're not actually triangles of the template. Uh, so the final step is that I want to modify things in such a way that I have the same picture, uh, but with the additional property that uh, uh, the outer decomposition is contained in the template. So. Um, so. So we want to modify, uh, so MC, uh, MI, MO, uh, to obtain M1, M2, M3, and M4. Um, so the picture we want here So um, so I'm going to draw the same picture, but just label things differently. So we've got here's here's L, here's the union of N, here's G star. Um, this is going to be the now the union of uh, M two. Uh, this thing here, the union of M one, and then here we're going to have the union of M three, which is equal to the union of M four. Uh, what, so what, what is this picture representing? So L and the union of M2 partition M1, union of M1. Uh, M2 is contained in M4, uh, and M3 is contained in the template. So this is, this is what we're aiming for. Um, so why, um, so then we we take our, our final decomposition uh, M to be uh, so it would be uh, N union uh, M1 union uh, M uh, or delete M2 union T 
delete m3. So this is just writing in symbols uh, what I said before about why we would be done in this case. We take the nibble, we take m1, uh, we take uh, some set of triangles which covers this graph but it doesn't contain m2, that's m4 union m2. And because m this graph has two different decompositions, one of which is contained in the template, I can use take remove that one from the template. Okay, so this is so this is the, so the aim for today. Uh, and this will complete the proof. Okay, so um, so I'll, I'll I'll divide this into two parts. So first of all, um, I'll try and find M three and M four, making some assumptions on M M one and M two. So we'll we'll see uh, what assumptions we need, and then then the second part will be to show that we can obtain M one and M two that satisfy these assumptions. So so firstly, um, so find uh, conditions on M1 and M2 such that there exist M3 and M4. Secondly, produce such M1 and M2. So that's a, that would be the plan. Okay, so, um, so how are we going to find uh, M3 and M4? Um, so We'll find we'll we'll do this triangle by triangle. So um, each for each triangle in in M two, um, I want to find uh, uh, some okay uh, some graph which contains it. Uh, so so for each um, f in M two, what I want is a uh, is some graph where there are two different g. Um, so let's say. Uh, union of, uh, let's call it uh, M3F is equal to the union of M4F. So this is a graph with two different triangle decompositions such that uh, M3F is contained in the template and F is in M4F. Okay. So, it's a, um, so I want to, um, so, so edge disjoint. So this is this will be the uh, how we construct M three and M four. So then um, M three is the union over f of M three f, and M four is the union over f of M four f. Okay. So so we do, we do it we do it tri by, triangle by triangle. Um, we want to find some some small or small subgraph with two different triangle decompositions. Um, and now the the algebra is going to start to play a role. So uh, if you think back to the first lecture, I can I construct I constructed this template by some uh, uh, randomized algebraic method. But I haven't said anything about algebra since then. It's all just been pseudo randomness properties. Okay. So uh, um, uh, so uh, so shuffle. Uh, so um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to define a so so the so suppose uh, we have uh, x1 x2 x3 t1 and t2 uh, um, is um, a subset of f2 to the a. Uh, and it's um, it's linearly independent over F two, um, i.e., no subset sums to zero. Okay. Um, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to con uh, con uh, consider a graph defined by by this choice. Um, Um, so sometimes I'll I'll omit the uh, the embedding pi. So 
Um, so sometimes uh, uh, we suppress uh, pi, which is embedding from So meaning instead of talking about, I'll, I'll identify, I'll think of the, the vertex set of G as being a subset of the field rather than uh, using this function. But, uh, but then I'll, I will use the function pi sometimes when I need to argue about it. Because I'm going to, if you recall, this was chosen randomly. OK, so. Uh, so the shuffle uh, uh, S X T um, is a complete uh, tripartite graph uh, with parts. Uh, so uh, I wanted to, t uh, to take uh, So okay, so um, so t one plus x, t uh, two plus x, t three plus x, where um, x is the set of x is the uh, subspace generated by x one x x two three, so set of all uh, subset sums of x1, x2, x3, and t is, t3 is equal to t1 plus t2. Okay. So is it, is it, is it clear what, I, what I've got here? So I've, I've, I've chosen some, um, some elements of the field, and then I'm considering a particular uh, complete tripartite graph. With, uh, so th uh, they are, it's defined by a, 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 a three-dimensional subspace, and then it's, there are some translates. So the no, it's Just to make sure it's eight by eight by eight. Eight by eight by eight. Yeah. So, so it's a it's a K eight eight eight. Okay. Um. So, okay. So um, now, if this is um, if this is contained in, uh, so this may or may not be contained in G. If it is contained in G, then it's actually contained in G star because. Uh, for any for any choice of two two vertices uh, in two different parts, the uh, the su their sum is in the third part. So, uh, note, uh, for any uh, UV in two different parts. Uh, u plus b is in the third part. So, if if S X if the shuffle is is a subgraph of G, then it's a, a subgraph of G star. Okay. Um, now, why 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 else have I chosen this particular construction? Um, it has two different triangle decompositions. One of which is comes from the template. And one of which is generic in a certain sense. So I'll explain. So, um, so uh, also, um, SXT has uh, two uh, triangle decompositions. Uh, so one is a subset of the template. Uh, so you see that uh, this this is um, this is comes from this ob observation here. So for any edge. In this shuffle, um, I, I have uh, u plus v uh, for any uv which is in this shuffle. I have u plus v um, in the third part, so that that defines the triangle of the template which contains that edge. Um, and the other one, um, so the other, uh, I'll translate uh, by the vector x one, x two, x three. So, i.e. Um, I take uh, the set of all y1, y2, y3, such that uh, y1 plus y2 plus y3 
plus x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 0. Okay, um, so this is another triangle decomposition of, of this shuffle SXD. Uh, you can see for the same reason. So for any choice of uh, y1 and y2, um, there is a unique y3, uh, which solves the equation, and it is contained in uh, the corresponding part by the, just by the, uh, by the construction. Okay. Um, so these are the objects which I, I want to use in order to, uh, to construct uh, M3 and M4. So for each F um, in M2, I want to choose uh, a, uh, a shuffle uh, in such a way that uh, F is contained in this second decomposition. And for congruence, let's say it it's, it's corresponds to the choice of um, Y1 is X1, Y2 is X2, Y3 is X3. No, not that that's really important. For each um, f in M2, um, we want some SXT uh, such that uh, f is equal to uh, x1, x2. Uh, what am I saying? Uh, T1 plus x1, T2 plus x2, T3 plus x2. Uh, okay, um, and okay, so we're going to we're going to choose these by a random greedy algorithm, um, in just like the uh, uh, the algorithms which I've been I used in the last lecture. So, uh. okay, so the. The first thing I want to know is, th is how many choices there are. So I fix f, and I want to know that there are many choices of, of such, a, such a shuffle. So, 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 so first, uh, uh, we fix. F, which is uh, uh, Z1, Z2, Z3, and count or estimate number of SXT such that uh, uh, Ti plus Xi is equal to Zi, or I equals 1, 2, 3. Um, so now, first of all, we should we should note that uh, some things are already uh, determined. So uh, uh, when I tell you uh, Z1, Z2, and Z3, I've told you uh, Z1 plus Z2, Z1 plus Z3, and um, the other one, uh, Z2, whichever one I didn't say. Uh, so uh, so so we've already specified so, so an octahedron in other words um, so this this will be the uh, the first condition which I need on M2, which is I want, uh, I don't want to just have any triangle here. I want to have one such that this octahedron is actually present um, in, my, in my graph and that these are all edge disjoint. So. Suppose this property P one. Um, uh, okay, so let's let's call this the um, the associated octahedron. 
of of f. Um, so, um, and and let's say that. Um, okay, so let's. Uh, so we'll, we'll say say f is octahedral uh, if its associated octahedron is contained in the well contained in, in the in the template. Well, I mean, I could say it's contained in G, and that would imply that it's contained in in G star. Okay, so uh, suppose this property P one that uh, so every f in M two is octahedral, um, and all of these associated octahedra are edge disjoint. Okay, um, so now, now I want to uh, to do to to, to make this counting. Um, so, stay tilted. It's a lemma. Uh, so, uh, so the number of choices. So, so given an octahedral. Z1, Z2, Z3, so the number of choices uh, for um, SXT. Um, so number of choices, yeah, okay, T is, it's a pro, so, I'll, so it's one plus or minus some constant, I think 200 C, uh, density to the 180. And times two to the uh, what's the dimension two a uh, I've missed out a factor uh, I think uh, gamma's eighteen two to two. We'll see anyway as we go what, what the expression is. So um, this is uh, 180 is the number of new edges which I'm taking. I've got a K888 and I've already specified eight of the edges. Uh, I think it's 180. Uh, 18 is the number of new vertices, six in each part. And uh, two to the two A comes from the, this is the dimension of the extension. We'll see this as as I as we go. Um, okay. So okay. So proof. So, okay. So let's uh, okay. Let's call it call it something X. Uh, so we write uh, X is uh, uh, a sum of various ways in which. Uh, so let's write it as a sum of some events so. Uh, where uh, so k um, uh, so k is a copy of k eight 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 uh, in G. Um, so I should I should here I should have said with high probability under pi. So uh, you remember there was this random embedding. Now I'm, I'm telling you an extra property of, of this. Um, so K, K is a property of K88 in G, um, which contains the associated octahedron of uh, Z1, Z2, Z3. Uh, uh, contain, containing the associated Octahedron, let's call it K prime of Z1, Z2, Z3. Uh, exactly, yes, yeah. Because uh, you see it has maximum degree 16. 
Um, so, so to count these uh, these K eight eight eight. But I don't really. Uh, there's a way of, of removing sixteen anyway. You can make it. You can. You know, so just by uh, regularity arguments, you can. You only need two typicality. Um, uh, so L L is. I need to tell you which which vertices are which according to the. Uh, um, so so L uh, labels K by so f2 cubed so this is um this is uh so some just some vector it's telling me which which sum of uh so each part of k <coughs> telling me uh uh which yeah which vertices correspond to which so of course uh the ones which are specified have to be in the right place so uh such that uh 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 l of uh z i or pi inverse of z i uh is e i so the uh, so the uh so this is the uh, the one in position i And L of uh, pi inverse of the Z I procedure. So it's a, uh, it, it tells me the correct positions of the, um, the vertices I've already specified. Uh, and X and T are just as before. And then this, this event is that the pi happens to uh, to uh, embed the vertices in such a way that. Uh, this choice of K and L corresponds uh, to a uh, a shuffle containing this uh, this uh, this octahedral triangle, um, and E K T is the event uh, that. Uh, so what is it? So the uh, uh, the lay so pi of uh, Uh, so the label of so for all uh, i which is one two three and let's say w in f two two three uh, we have so the uh, label of uh, pi inverse of uh, 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 ti plus w dot x is equal to w. Okay, so I hope that that formula expresses what I what I said. But it's so it's it, this is supposed to express uh, that uh, the pi uh, is such that the uh, the the vertex uh, in in part i uh, corresponding to Adding this particular subset of uh, right, so this this vertex is uh, no. What have I done? Yeah, um, I've, I've got this copy of of of, of K and this. Uh, this this is I'm, I'm not sure if this formula makes sense. Is is it is it should I maybe I should draw a picture to express what I what I'm trying to say. So here's here's uh, here's k. So here's uh, uh, so here's pi of k. Here's Here's Z1, uh, so Z1, Z2, and Z3. Um, and this is equal to, uh, so pi of, 
Uh, okay, no, it's a. Uh, Let me not try and figure out what, what the labeling is, but there, there is some labeling which tells me which, uh, which vertex corresponds to, uh, uh, to which vertex in K. Okay, so let's, um, I just, Erase it, but let, let's uh, uh, let's work out the expected value of x. So, um, so I want to make various choices. So, first of all, I have to choose k. So, uh, I need. To, so, this is uh, giving me this kind of expression here. It's uh, so let's say one plus or minus. Uh, 180c, or as maybe say 181, just to be safe. 181c density of g to the 180 uh, n to the 80. Okay, so this is a uh, this is the extension formula which I mentioned uh, maybe last time. Um, just you build it vertex by vertex using typicality. Uh, what else? So now I want to choose uh, x and t. This this has also got uh, because I'm ordering the vertices here. This has got the labeling built in. It's okay. And uh, uh, I mean the constants are not really important anyway. What's important is that there is some definite expression. Um, number of choices in, of x and t. Number of choices uh, of x and t such that um, xi plus ti is equal to zi for i s 1, 2, 3. Um, so this is a, a system of th three equations in, in five unknowns. Uh, it's, uh, so it's 1 plus order 1 over n times 2 to the 2n. I put this order 1, I put this approximation in because I've got the condition that um, x and t are supposed to, no sum is supposed to be Zero, so that might happen for some choices, but it's it's a lower order, uh, lower order magnitude. So, so also need a linear linearly independent over F two. Okay, uh, what else? So, okay, so I've chosen these things. Now I need to say what is the uh, the probability that the the embedding pi is uh, uh, has this property, so conditional on the uh, the embeddings of Z one and Z two and Z three. So, so conditional on so so pi uh, so so pi inverse of uh, Z one Z two. Z3, and the same for Z1 plus Z2, Z1 plus Z3, Z2 plus Z3. Um, what is the probability that pi, uh, so I have, I have prescribed uh, images, so the, the probability of the event So I just I just have uh, uh, eighteen prescribed vertices which have to be mapped to the the uh, correct place. So it's uh, okay. So uh, uh, so therefore, so multiply these together, we get the the right expression for the expected values. Plus or minus. So I've got this uh, density term 180, 
this 2 to the minus 18a goes with the n to the 18 to give me a gamma to the 18. And then I have a 2 to the 2a. Okay, so this is the expected uh, value. Um, what, uh, so now I want to apply uh, Azuma's inequality to get concentration. Um, so, so now I want to apply Azuma. So, uh, so what what is what is the effect of a transposition? So, um, so the uh, so C the effect of a transposition. Um, well, it's enough to, to fix an additional vertex and see uh, how many uh, shovels can, can satisfy that there's some additional vertex which, uh, um, which is mapped there. So, so count number of SXT so such that. So number of choices of SXT such that this equation holds and... And we also have uh, uh, x, xi, so let's say xj plus uh, tj uh, plus uh, b dot x is equal to v for some uh, b in f2 cubed and v in f2 to the n. Right? So this is... The number of choice. Uh, this is this tells me uh, how many shuffles. So number of shuffles such that on Z one, one, two, three, uh, which uh, use some fixed v. So this is this is some b, which is uh, I should say it's not one of the ones which we've already used. So it's not um, if I'm so b is not. EJ and it's not uh, one 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 on this EJ. So these are these are the uh, two. So uh, J is in there. Okay. So these um, the, these are the kinds of things which we need to estimate in order to see what the the changes in the zoom. And you see this is a this is an ad additional linear equation which is uh, in linearly independent of, of the others. And so. Uh, this is now it's uh, this is the most uh, uh, two to the n, so it's a uh, much lower order magnitude, and so you see that as Azuma applies to give concentration. So um, now I'm going to need other kinds of uh, uh, estimates like this. I'm not just going to be counting these things. There are going to be other kinds of uh, linear extensions. So uh, I want to count uh, embeddings of subgraphs, which are realized by uh, some uh, where each vertex has a linear form attached, and the embedding is realized by assigning values to this linear form. So. So, so it's a similar kind of uh, picture to as we had before. So I'll have some some graph H, and um, some F, and I'll be looking at embeddings in in G star. Uh, but each each vertex in in H has a linear form attached. So for all the um, in VH, we have uh, distinct linear forms. So L V Z. So Z is some vector of variables, say uh, G variables, which and it's of the form uh, so some constant term plus some subset of uh, of the variables. So. Uh,
Okay, so um, we, we've got these linear forms. I'm even assuming they have a particular form, which is that so there's a constant term which can be any element of the field, but the uh, uh, the variable terms are just uh, just have zero one coefficients. Um, and I'm interested in uh, in embeddings which are realized by assigning some values to uh, so f. What is f? F is the set of uh, uh, f is the set of all v such that L v is equal to C v. It's constant. So it's uh, there's some. There might, it might be that this S v is empty. So uh, uh, I ha I've specified a constant uh, position, and then there are some which are variable, and these are the ones which I want to set. So. So. So we want uh, so a letter. Uh, so let's let's write uh, uh, e for the pair l and h, and uh, x e g star for the number of uh, say l embeddings. Uh, so uh, so these are embeddings of phi. Uh, Such that, there are, such that there exists some y um, in f2 to the a to the g, such that uh, phi of v is equal to uh, l v of y, cool v of f x. Um, and, and let me also suppose to avoid uh, degenerate, I want to avoid degeneracy. I don't want to, ch to consider y such that some vertices are. Um, uh, collide so uh so I'm, and we I'll be y distinct. Okay. Um so so I want I want to tell you there's a similar kind of formula to what I just the one I just stated for shuffles that applies for these kinds of extensions. Um uh, now I need I need some other conditions. Uh so so I need to assume that there is uh uh so wh whenever I have a uh, an edge in G star, there's a triangle which has to be present. So th this had better be reflected in, in the kinds of uh, structures I'm trying to embed in. I want them any, I'm only going to be interested in graphs H that have a triangle decomposition such that the forms, the linear forms on those vertices, uh, the vertices of those triangles obey the rules for the template. Suppose uh, uh, H has a triangle decomposition M such that rule A, B, C, and M you have some of the linear forms is, is zero. Uh, and then I want to know what is the dimension of, of this extension. So I said there were uh, there were there were G variables, but maybe there are, there's some redundancy. So let's assume that that this is the um, uh, this is the dimension. So the uh, so the uh, so the uh, the incidence matrix of the set of all S V has a full rank G. Um, then I can tell uh, tell you a, a formula for uh, for these extensions. One plus or minus, let's say, twice the number of edges times C. Uh, density to the number of new edges, etc. Uh, gamma to the number of new vertices. And 2 to the A to the power of the dimension. So I won't, I won't go. You know, so the proof is similar to the one I showed. The, I showed you this if, for a particular case of if the shuffle extension, and this holds uh, more generally.
OK, so, so we think back to the uh, random greedy algorithm, which we want to apply for choosing these, these shuffles. Um, so the, the first step was just to say, well, how many choices are there? The first thing we need to do is say each step how many choices there are. Second step is we want to say uh, not too many are excluded by the ones we chose previously. So under some boundedness assumption that we're trying to prove, if, if, if that has not failed yet, then we've, we exclude at most half of the choices. So next. Uh, so one to show uh, for all f and then two uh, under some boundedness assumption less than half of the total number of choices of SXT uh, 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 are forbidden because they use a previous, uh, so previously covered edge. Okay, so okay, so uh, so we need to classify these forbidden choices according to which the role of the edge in the shuffle that, that that's going to be hitting the edge which has been used. So classify uh, according to uh, to the role of edge in SXT. So I uh, so we pick so so we fix some uh, J and K which are in the season three. So maybe, maybe we focus on the first two parts and we fix some uh, B J and and BK which oh, tell me which vertices I'm looking at um, uh, and they should not be I'm not interested in the ones which are are in the base so it's uh, so it's not I've got these uh, uh, so so VJ, VK, uh, not in the base. So this, the base is the associated octahedron. And then this is the shuffle. Okay, so I've already fixed the, the ones in the base, and then I, I fix some BJ, B, BK, which corresponds to a, a choice of, of edge which is not in the base. And then now, and then I also want to... Uh, uh, So then, okay. So and then, uh, we want to count uh, number of covered uh, v j v k in g star uh, such that. Uh, so we we have the equations for the sh the shuffle. So. Uh, uh, what are we saying? Uh, so, and we also have uh, the equations which say that this this edge is covered by this by the, the, this uh, this choice. So. Uh, So, so I've got some system of equations. Let me call this uh, S, a system of equations. Um, and so there are various cases according to the, the dimension of this, of this system. So it, it could have a unique solution, uh, or it could have uh, two to the A solutions. These are the possibilities. So, uh, Uh, 
you can't have two sort of two a solutions because at, at least one of these equations is it these equations can't be in the span of can't both be in the span of this so case one is a s has a one solution um okay so now um uh i can i can just say well they uh, the this is the easy case the number of covered uh uh uh, edges is is uh, it's just I just take the um, let's see what do I want to say yeah um, I can I can just estimate the number of forbidden choices just by the total number of co covered edges so so then Uh, which is at most, uh, what you say, 180 times the size of M2. Uh, and what was, how big, how big was M2? It was some small constant times N squared. I think it's, it was maybe C3 times N squared, possibly. Um, um, and this is much smaller than the number of shuffles, because the number of shuffles was some, uh, something which looked like 2 to the 2a times some density factors. Uh, so this is less than half the total. Uh, well, I, should, I shouldn't say a half, because I'm going to, you know, maybe you know, less than a tenth or something, but just because I'm going to have another case. Okay, um, so now what's the other case? So, uh, um, S has two to the A solutions. Um, so that that could mean that uh, that one of V J and V K belongs to the base. Um, in which case we're looking at the degree of the vertex. But there's another thing which we need to consider, which is that uh, Vj and Vk have uh, some constant sum. So they are, they, they are, they're specified by a line. So, so could be uh, one of Vj and Vk is in base, or uh, Vj plus Vk is constant. I, uh, Vj, Vk is on a line. Okay. Um, so, so I want to have some good estimate on the number of such things that I've covered. So the first case is, is, is the boundedness, which I was talking about previously. So we use a small number of edges at any vertex. Second case is, is now it's a new property, which I want to introduce. I want to say uh, I also cover a, a small fraction of, of edges in any line. So... Uh, so this will be a, a generalization of the previous definition of boundedness. So we say, uh, say J uh, subset of G star is uh, C prime bounded if has at most um, C times 2 to the A edges in any, uh, so let's say, let's say a basic line. So a set of all uh, uh, uv such that uh, u plus v is, is constant. Okay, uh, uh, and let me also throw in the uh, the uh, the, uh, the boundedness condition, uh, which I had already. Uh, so I don't have to say linear bounded and bounded. Uh, uh, and J is C bounded. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. Next degree. Less than this. Okay. Um, so, uh, so this is uh, this is leading me to the this, this second property, which I want to assume on M two. So, so this is this is a property. I'm going to maintain boundedness of of the things which I'm covering in this random greedy algorithm. But I also covered some things already when I chose the uh, M two and the associated octahedra. So, uh, so let's let uh, delta be uh, union of all associated octahedra f and n2 and so suppose this be my second assumption so delta is some uh, linearly so I think we're up to c4 now c4 banded And, and then, so what's, what's the assumption which we want to be, we also want some assumption which we're trying to prove on our random greedy algorithm. So, um, so in the random greedy algorithm, uh, so let gamma be uh, the new edges uh, covered. Uh, so, so we'll ass uh, assume and prove that uh, gamma is, uh, well, let's see. So we started with M2 as being C3 bounded. So let's say gamma is linearly C3 prime bounded. Something between there. Okay. Um, all right. So, so under this assumption, um, we see that the number of choices w of, uh, which are forbidden uh, in case two is small, so so then uh, so number of forbidden SXT in case two is less than so there you go, 192 or 180 192 because now I've got the base as well um, C3 prime plus C4 times 2 to the A uh, and then times two to the a. So this is uh, this is the number of solutions. Uh, and then this is our boundedness. But, and again, this is less than a tenth of the total. Okay. So, um, okay. So we're in good shape for the uh, the random greedy algorithm. We know as we're going along under these assumptions that uh, there are lots of choices of shuffle, and at each we've forbidden at most a half of them. A fifth. So what's what's the uh, next ingredient of the random greedy algorithm? Um, we want to uh, make a comparison to the uniformly random choices, and we want to fix an edge and, and what's, look at the expected number of times it's covered. So next, we fix e g star and estimate what we what we called. E sub E, so the expected number of times you cover E by uh, uniform, so independent, uniformly random uh, shuffles for all F and M2. Okay, so again, let's uh, so we, we fix uh, uh, we're going to fix the role of uh, of the edge in the shuffle, which is going to cover E, just as we did before. So, so again, uh, we fix the role 
uh, J and K, uh, B, J and B, K. Um, we write E is B, J, B, K. So, uh, uh, so covering E is the same thing as solving S, the same system of equations that I wrote up before. Uh, but now I'm now I'm looking at it from a different perspective. Um, now um, I've uh, so before I was thinking about vj and vk z, as the I was thinking about uh, z1, z2, z3 as being fixed and the vj and vk varying. Now I've got fixed vj, vk. I'm, I'm thinking about z1, z2, and z3 varying. Um, so uh, I'll say that. But, so, so now vj, vk are fixed. And Z1, Z2, Z3 are varying. Okay, so again, the easy case is when S has a unique solution. I don't need to worry about the restriction on, on Z1, Z2, Z3. I can just consider all of them. So then, whereas then, uh, f so for each, uh, so then, so the probability uh, that uh, so 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 for all f in M two, the probability that we we cover e uh, at step f. is 1 over this, whatever this expression was. Okay. Uh, so, um, so, uh, so contribution, so size of M2 is less than C3N squared, so, so, contri so contribution Less than uh, so two C uh, three uh, DG to the minus one hundred and eighty uh, gamma to the minus eighty. So some some small constants, but because uh, because C three is small. Um, Okay. Uh, second case is that S has two to the A solutions. So now we're not looking at all uh, all choices of Z1, Z2, Z3. There's some linear constraint which which they have to satisfy in order to be able to contribute to such an S. So uh, then. Um, so we only get uh, non-zero probability probably non-zero from f, which is z1, z2, z3, in some basic plane. Pi. Uh, set of all z such that uh, b dot z uh, is equal to b sum b in f2 cubed and b in f2 to the a not z. Uh, Okay, um, so this is the last, the last condition I need on M two. On M two, it should shouldn't have too much, too many triangles in any basic plane. M 
M2 has less than, say, let's say 4, 2 to the A, uh, triangles in any basic plane. So under this assumption, uh, uh, the contribution, so the uh, um, contribution to E to B is less than C4 times 2 to the A times the probability. Probability is 2 to the A divided by this same expression ending in 2 to the A. Uh, so, uh, so let's say this is less. Let's say this. Say this one is less than uh, a tenth of C three prime, and this one is also less than a, uh, What am I? Uh, I? I messed up my constants, haven't I? Uh, this uh, this should have been some constant which is less than C three prime in order for me to. Uh, uh, to get the boundedness, but you know what? Actually, let's uh, let's. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the boundedness is of of gamma, so let's make it a bit bigger. So uh, yeah. So you know, when I said uh, uh, gamma was was C three prime bounded, let's say it was C four prime bounded. showing uh, uh, gamma is linearly C4 prime gamma. Didn't, didn't, didn't affect anything I did so, so far in the estimates. Uh, because all of these constants which I'm writing, all of these Cs are very small compared with the densities. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so you go back. On, on those calculations you replace C3 by C4. It's not going to uh, make any difference. Um, so where where are we at? So so the conclusion so uh, of the step so so uh, less than uh, okay so. So, we're not, so now I claim we're done modulo the assumptions that I've made on M2. So it's, I've set up this random greedy algorithm so that uh, there are many choices of shuffle at each step. I've excluded at most half, half of them. And then I've calculated the uh, expected number of times I cover uh, any given edge by independently random shuffles. And it's small. Um, and each, sh each shuffle has constant size, so the standard concentration inequalities will tell me with high probability that I take at most you know, C4 prime proportion of anything I like. So before I was interested in uh, taking edges of vertices, but this is the same thing applies to taking edges in lines. So I've only got a polynomial number of things that I'm interested in. Uh, I have concentration bounds holding with uh, uh, exponential tails. So it's a... Uh, uh, so, uh, so what shall I say? So, so now, so done by concentration inequalities. So modulo uh, assumptions p one, p two, and p three. Okay. So this is uh, this is what I said was part one. Uh, so not a lot of time for part two, but just uh, uh, briefly, what what are we going to do? Is so we uh, it's the uh, it's the same kind of uh, octahedral elimination algorithm. Uh, so in fact, it's the same algorithm, but I'm proving different things about it and slightly different conditions on exactly what I'm doing. What what what? Well, let me state it. So step two. Uh, so show 
that exists M1. And P2 such that So again, we've got the, uh, the octahedral uh, elimination algorithm. Um, so we, we start with uh, some, some vector, which is uh, of triangles. Um, so we, what, are we, what are we doing? So we're taking uh, MC and MI and subtracting M0. So MC covers um, L and S, and then uh, M0 minus MI is, is S. So this is equal. So this has uh, two, uh, two boundary equal to L. Uh, and I want to uh, I want to modify uh, phi to produce to so that it's, it becomes m two minus or m one minus m two um, such that m two satisfies these properties. So modify phi to uh, psi, which is uh, uh, m one minus m two, such that. Uh, Phase phase one, so so, um, so as before, we're going to replace every uh, tri signed element of phi by using some octahedron. So so replace every signed element uh, f phi uh, via an octahedron ending f. Uh, what properties do I, I want of this? Um, so such that uh, uh, so I want uh, all of the triangles which I can guarantee which I can actually make um, octahedral. Uh, I want to make them octahedral. So uh, such that all uh, I'll say far triangles so far means it's, it's f prime such which has at most one vertex in common with with f uh, and uh, a technical condition is I don't I don't want any of the triangles to be uh, to satisfy I want the vertices to be independent so or, or more specifically not to belong to the template so no uh, f prime not equal to f is in t. Uh, you can ignore that. That's a very small constraint. Um, uh, and all of all of the new edges are uh, are disjoint. What are the new edges? So there's there's the octahedron. There are also the associated octahedra. Which are sitting on on these, which are required for these uh, octahedral triangles. So, uh, um, so the uh, so the extended configuration omega s plus is uh, is omega s with uh, associated octs on the far triangles. Uh, so the new edges are you know, those in omega, sorry, we call it omega f plus, but not, not the ones in f, the ones I've already got. And I want uh, all of the new edges to be new. They're not, they're, they haven't been covered previously. Uh, edges uh, not yet covered. So choose uniformly at random from such. Yeah.
And then what's phase two? Uh, so it's uh, the form is the same as the the uh, as in the previous octahedral elimination algorithm. So uh, so replace. So we have a sequence S of FF prime, which look like a plus and minus using some edge E. Um, and these uh, these are all triangles which these will be all triangles which are uh, are not far in the previous step. Uh, so so partition. Partitioning set of all triangles such that not far in phase one and not uh, using an edge of L. Uh, so, so the rest of these uh, uh, cancel in pairs. Um, and then I'm going to replace these. So, so replace by uh, octahedron. Call it omega FF prime. So I want now I want uh, all of the triangles in apart from F and F to F prime to be octahedral. Except F and F prime the octahedral. Uh, that's it. Uh, and then the new edges, so we have the extended configuration. Omega F prime plus, so it's a, this is omega F prime plus a associated octahedra. And so the new edges are omega F primes, uh, not in F or F prime. And again, just as before, so, uh, so not yet covered. And again, uniformly at random. Okay. So this is the algorithm. It's a uh, uh, same kind of algorithm as as before. So it's going to produce uh, something which is uh, which satisfies the correct conditions. Uh, just have to an now have to analyze it and say with high probability it has the re required boundedness conditions. So it's uh, what should I say about the proof? So the uh, so analysis of the, uh, the algorithm. So uh, so just um, just in summary form, because there's not much time. So so we count. So uh, so the linear linear extension formula. Okay, the number of choices at each step. Uh, so, um, ignoring uh, previously covered. Right, so I just I just fix uh, some triangle or some pair of triangles. And I want to know how many octahedra are there on that triangle or pair of triangles with this additional condition about some of the triangles being octahedral, this is described by a particular linear extension. So you, you write down the octahedron, you assign variables to the new vertices, and then for each condition, each octahedron which is there saying this is octahedral, there are some linear forms, uh, some linear equations which have to be satisfied. Okay, so um, the... Uh, so the number of forbidden choices... 
So this is, again, it's, uh, it's a similar kind of thing to, to what I showed you for the, uh, uh, when we were thinking about how many shuffles are after bin. So, And again, I mean, and the, and 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 you know, these, these are similar kinds of calculations. There's an, an additional calculation which I need to make here, which is uh, controlling the number of triangles in basic planes. So, um, so there, things are, are happening with probability which scales like one over n rather than uh, a constant. But it's again, there's, uh, the uh, all that matters is the mean of the variable which we're trying to control. It's uh, it's scaling like like n, and it's it, it's concentrated. So that's just a, it's a very sort of schematic idea of the uh, analysis of this algorithm. Um, although the, the details are, are quite messy. It's probably the messiest part of the proof. Uh, it's not too bad. Um, so, yeah. So, okay, so that's a kind of summary of things. So just maybe just a uh, few remarks about uh, future directions. So, uh, um, so what is... So, so one is a practical thing to actually um, implement the uh, the algorithm. So, so it's a, what I've described here is a randomized algorithm for producing not just triangle decompositions but a, a design. So it's I've, I've shown the existence of designs, but we don't actually have you know examples of say uh, designs with R, R equals six. So it's a, be interesting to find a, a small example. Um, uh, then there are various kinds of uh, generalizations. So um, there are extremal questions, such as the uh, so the Nash Williams conjecture, which I mentioned in the first lecture. The uh, 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 minimum degree which you require for a tri for a, a tridivisible graph to have a triangle decompetition. So, um, uh, so Nash Williams conjecture is that that's three n over four, uh, and actually these kinds of methods will you know, probably show that it's enough to solve this problem fractionally. So, it's, uh, if you can find a if you can find a fractional decomposition with that degree, then you'll be able to actually find a, a natural decomposition. Uh, by the way, that's also being proved by uh, Barber, Kuhn, Lowe, and Osler. So they improved. I forgot to mention when I was talking about the Nash Williams conjecture, they have an improved bound on the minimum degree, something like 0 0.96 times n or something, which, which corresponds to the best known fractional uh, bound for the problem. Um, so, so H uh, decompositions for any. Hypergraph H. Uh, so, I said that uh, Steiner systems are about decomposing complete hypergraphs into other complete hypergraphs, and I've been talking about decomposing arbitrary hypergraphs into complete hypergraphs, and then about decomposing graphs into triangles. But the general question, of course, is to decompose arbitrary hypergraphs into copies of some other fixed hypergraph, or maybe several such. So. Um, so here, I mean, there are a lot of results for uh, for graphs. So the full picture for graphs is, has been established by Wilson and, and his uh, co-authors. Uh, and, and actually, the, uh, there's a natural conjecture for what the answer should be for hypergraphs uh, based on another result of Wilson. So he, there are some necessary divisibility conditions for other hypergraphs. And, and Wilson has shown that under these conditions, there is an integral solution to the, the hypergraph decomposition problem. So it's it's really so now it's a problem about converting an integral solution into a zero one solution um, and then lastly there's the sort of the direction of perfect matchings in hypergraphs so which I mentioned in my that was the subject of my my talk yesterday so uh, 
Um, so there's a, a rich theory now for the um, for perfect matchings in dense hypergraphs, including the results which I was talking about yesterday. So we, we have a very good understanding. And uh, so what, what's happening as you as you move from the dense world to sparse hypergraphs, such as the ones which arise in design theory. There are many other design theory problems which could be phrased in terms of these hypergraphs. Uh, it was also interesting to to understand the structure of, of these random objects. Nathie was just saying to me earlier, you know, can we, what, can we, what can we say about random Steiner triple systems and uh, uh, random designs, random, even random perfect matchings in hypergraphs? It's very hard to, to s there, are, there are results for graphs which we don't know extensions to hypergraphs. Of lectures and these. Well, that, that's a small moment of Thank you very much.